What's up? <laughs> this is Tim. And I'm Tony. What's up, guys? TNT. TNT back at you. <laughs> Boom. Boom. <laughs> hey, want to welcome everybody on tonight. It is Tuesday night, and we are super grateful for all of our followers. Uh, we yes. are actually all following Christ. Um, and if you haven't, you know there will be an opportunity uh, by the end of this video for you to invite him in your life. But we are not here uh, for our followers. We're here to unite as we follow Christ. Um, so we, we really appreciate you coming on um, daily or weekly, or even if you get on once a month. Like, uh, yeah. like I said, it's not about the views. It's about the rating for God. And, and God, God rates us at the top of his list. It says this in scripture that even before even before we ever tried to love God, uh, for I, I, says, he first even loved. before we loved him. But it, in my version, if I wrote the Bible, I'd say even, even before we tried to love him, like <laughs> we at our best shot of trying Legit. to love him, he loved Legit. us first. And, uh, and, and so that, that scripture is just coming to mind right now. Man, God is love, and he is loving on us so much that we want to love on you guys and uh, welcome you on dude, tonight. Dude, that is legit, man. Hey, <laughs> like, like think, think about that for a minute. We love because he first loved us. Like we only have the ability to do that because he did it unto us. Like yeah. that's crazy. Like that's crazy good. Well, I, I, I had some people say to me, you know, our love is very conditional towards others you know, right. I'll love you if, and, if. and I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man, I feel like I'm pretty, and this is like 10 years ago. I feel like I'm a pretty good unconditional <laughs> lover, you know, like I've had some really bad people come in my life and man, I love them. Right. I'm there for them and you know, and all yep. that. And, uh, and then I got married. Dude. And, and you know what? I'll tell you this. What unconditional you, what love <laughs> is loving the person next to you and that person that is your other half really loving them beyond what you believe love is you know and and that's something i'm i'm trying to learn amen um, me too you know in in today's title i don't want to jump too quick into it because i know tony you want to welcome some people on but the title wow. is what do you see and some people you know they just love what they see, but they don't love what is unseen. And, and that, that, I don't want to, like I said, I don't want to get too quick into <laughs> this, good. but I, I just, <laughs> do you love what you see or do you love what you don't see? And, and, and what mm. we don't see should be what God sees. It should be something, you know, out of our sight. If, if you think of God being above all, overall, wow. and in all, he's seeing wow. things from heaven to earth. And we need to get that kind of insight for those around us and really? uh, stop seeing each other's sin. And, 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 you know, my wife would say if she was in here, Tim, you say some good things, but man, you know, you got to start practicing it. And, and you know what? <laughs> it's true. Like I humbly will say what I am offering to you guys, I am in the process of learning and I have nothing of this totally figured out. <laughs> But I That's know right. that God's Holy Spirit speaks through us to you guys to encourage you as he's encouraging us to walk in that unconditional, unseen faith. Amen. Amen. The door's knocking. Come in if you need to come in. You're good. Hey, we just want to thank you guys that you're jumping on. Like Tim said, I see ja Jacqueline on. So she put a little smiley face. She's laughing at what Tim had to say. So that's awesome. Um, Tim, I think you were not on when she first uh, joined Truth a while back as far as coming on and she just got wrecked by God, by Holy Spirit, Ooh. like about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago. And dude, she's like, oh my gosh, you're just saying, you're just confirming so many. Like she was just lit. She was beyond, oh, like awesome. it was so crazy. shout out to Jacqueline. So shout out to Jackie. I know God is doing wonderful things in and through you and you're knowing who you are in Christ Jesus. And I just, I just uh, commend you for just surrendering because that's all she did was just surrender. And when she surrendered, he came in like a rushing river and just filled her and and she was just just 
uh, the, the what I remembered from the conversation as she was just as I, the Holy Spirit was speaking through me and I was just uh, speaking. She was just grateful and thankful. And she was just it was just awesome. I can't even remember what video she'll probably remember. But anyways, Jack, Jacqueline, it's nice to see you back on. Uh, God bless you. And thanks for joining us uh, for today's message. Uh, what do you see? Uh, I'm not sure who else is on right now. I'm not really seeing any comments or anything like that. I think uh some of the folks uh, told me they were going to come on a little bit later, so that's fine. I already shared it to some groups, so we're good there. Uh, Tim, you want to start off in a word of prayer? Yeah, for sure. Let's do it, brother. All right, God, I thank you that tonight is your night. Yes, I thank Lord. you, God, that you take away our way and you give us you. You give us your way, Yahweh. God, we invite you into our into our speech, into our minds, into our hearts. God, we ask that you'd heal our body, our soul, and our spirit tonight. God, that we would be reunited and you would redefine what it means to see the unseen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. In that last part of the prayer, you said reunited. And I was thinking about this song and I, I'm going to be dating myself. You won't know this song probably, but it's an old school song. It said, oh, I'll know it. Reunited and it feels so, so good. good. <laughs> I know. Hey, hey, when you're reunited with Christ, it definitely feels good because he's a good Good father. Oh, man. Here's what Jacqueline had to say. She just put the comment on. Yes. Uh, he is. Thank you, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, fully surrender obedience. Yeah, lit for Jesus. Amen, Jacqueline. Awesome. Well, we, well, we're glad you're on. So let's just uh, let's keep it going, brother. So what's on your heart? What do we have today? Well, yesterday I did a video, and whether you watch it or not is dependent upon if you're going to heaven or not. No, I'm just kidding. Ah! <laughs> with you. Turn burn, man. Turn I'm totally we're kidding. We're kidding. With you. But <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're glad to have you on. Hey, That's this right. is who we are. Tony, we and gotta I, have some we fun, are man. Jokesters, and we <laughs> love God, but man, we love to laugh too. So I just want to, sh- I just right. want to say that first of all, we love to have fun, and uh, and so that that was the joke to start out with but <laughs> yesterday we uh i woke up and god gave me a word and he said follow your heart and you know it sounds like a disney movie it might sound like a you know some saying in a romantic comedy that you'd watch right, right. um but truly when it comes from the voice of god it, it it was like heaven opened up to me right where i was at and and i mm. saw First of all, me walking into the woods, which is my favorite place. I love being in the, in the trees. I love getting lost in nature, not because of the emotional support it gives me, right. but it drowns out all the distractions of the yeah. earth. And, and yeah. hmm. it's a little hard for me to say this, but I have not been in the woods in a long time man i hear you i hear you i have nature life i've been working i have kids i got family i've been i relocated across country like and those are just a few things but that is how busy i have been as a human being and right now god's like i need you to get back to that place where you go in and out and i said what's in and out and he goes into me you know the word into me i see everybody says that intimacy but Uh-oh. come come in into the courts of praise and then go yeah. out praising his name you know and this is what he's been saying to me as a form of worship i go play guitar and i can't play anything i can't sing anything for some reason i'm wrecked and i'm sitting there i'm like why and god says because i need you to come into me like i need you to know me i need you to spend time with me. I need you to hear what I'm saying to you, what, I'm, what I've been formulating this yeah. entire life for you. I want to share a piece of that with you right now before you start going out and praising my name, right? 
Wow. So this is what he's been inviting me into is that place where I can go where there are no distractions and I can find him and he can bring life back to me because I'm going to go out because that's who I am. You yeah. know, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an extrovert, man. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be alone sitting in a room. Like I go yeah. crazy. Like I'm in prison. Like exactly. the truth is I like to be around people because I like seeing people smile and laugh and you know, all that. But sometimes everybody's not in that place. And that is when we specifically need to get back to that place where we are inviting him to lead us on a new path or lead us on an old path that mm -hmm. looked too straight and narrow for us to walk because we were looking at our sin the whole time we were there. Right. Oh, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah, yeah. sometimes God's like, let's walk this way. Let's walk this way. And it's really the straight and narrow, but you're like, dude, this thing is boring, man. Look at all these people, man. Like I was just talking to that person for 25 minutes and now you're asking me to let them go their own way. And we, and then we jumped off that straight and narrow due to the fact that we love people, but mm. we forgot to love God. We for, and, and, and this is the, this is what God has been speaking yes. to me and I'll let you take it over. Tony. Oh no, you're good. But God's been speaking to Tony and I individually in different ways. But what he's been telling us as, as brothers is this, obey God love your neighbor because a lot of us want to please man, which is what the reverse yeah. of that obey your neighbor. Don't, don't offend your neighbor. Don't hurt your neighbor. Don't, don't do this. Don't do that. And it's yeah. all don't do, don't do, don't do. And then we wonder why we're falling back into sin is because we're falling back into something that's not of God. We're trying to obey yes. our neighbor and then what? And then love God. And it's like this reverse version of what god's asking he says love the lord your god with all your heart but love your neighbor as yourself but first he's asking us to walk in obedience with him and then all of a sudden we see how much he loves us when we walk in obedience you know children that are not um that are not disciplined are really not children of a father you know they they can and i don't want to use the word but you know a son without a father is a bastard right you know what i mean and like God has called us his kids. He's called us his children and we need to act that way. And we can't act like we don't have anybody because he created us and put us right here. We all showed up. Nobody has an idea of how we got here other than the very beginning. You know, God, you know, he did the whole thing with Adam and Eve, but like God's way is higher than ours. The way we got here, the way he's planned for us, and he has a perfect will for us if we just stop, get out of the distractions, repent for our way, and turn to Yahweh. Man. I know it's so, a lot, man. But no, it's so good. You ask me what's on my heart. So no, <laughs> that's so great. Good. That's that's perfect. And and before I even like you know chime Jesus. in, I want to read what Jacqueline says, and she puts the way you two minister is perfect. Word of God, speak. God speaks to me through you immensely. God first. Obedience is key. And Jacqueline, we appreciate that, and and thank you for 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 the love and the comment because we know that's from a sister in Christ. And we love you. And uh, Dustin, I see you're on. What's up, Dustin? Hey, happy uh, newborn! I know you got your 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 your, your new baby there. So that's awesome, I, uh, baby girl, right, Dustin? I believe so. So I forgot for some reason. But uh, man, Dustin, it's good to have you, brother. Um, our yeah. way, Yahweh, and Father God, we just thank you, Lord. I I just have this overwhelming. <laughs> Just thanks in my heart, Lord. So right now, let's just, I just want to thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for, for redeeming us. Thank you, Lord, for reconciling us back to you, Lord Jesus. You are amazing. And we just thank you, Father, because mm. truly we have the ability to love because you first loved us since the mm. beginning. And Lord... We can never repay you. <laughs> we can never repay you. The best thing we could do is walk and be 
who you created us to be. So, Father God, we surrender and help us, lead us, guide us, teach us to be more like you every day. <laughs> and Jesus, <laughs> that's what I feel, man. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Thank you, Lord. You know, we always, like you said, we want to please man instead of please God, yet man is not the creator. God is. God is the creator. And we say, we say this a lot at Truth. A lot of us tend to worship creation instead of the creator. Mm. And we got to worship the creator because through him, everything exists. He holds everything together. And, and, and just that alone should just blow us away. And when you say our way, Yahweh, I think sometimes what we forget is everything that we learn from a little baby. You have young ones. Dustin has some young ones. And um, everything that we've learned from a young age, it, it's still from the world. Even though there could be some good things in there, we're still learning from the world. So our parents even taught us, but they might have taught us from things that they've learned from the world that was passed down from their parents and their parents and their parents. And and I, I say this to preface it in the sense mm. that we just stay in that pattern and we keep doing it and we, we think it's good and there's nothing really wrong with it. But it gets to a point where our life it stays that way. And we're like, yeah, we're doing good. I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm staying away from evil. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And, and you could see your life becoming do instead of a rest. It's a do mentality. Everything mm. in this world is to achieve something. you got to do, 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 do to achieve that. Mm. When God says, if you would surrender who you think you are, I'll show you who you are and you will receive everything in me. And, and it's so backwards. It's so reverse. And I think, we have to be reminded of that, that, that our true nature, the world is already doing our true nature, which is living by the flesh. The yeah. opposite is living by the spirit. So I, you know. When, and the flesh, and, the uh -huh. flesh, you know what? I think Tony and I were talking about this earlier. The flesh responds to what it sees. There we the go. The spirit. Yep. You know, the spirit responds to what is unseen, which is God, which is, yes. which is spirit, you know, and, and it's like what God is calling us to yep. is to understand what our flesh wants to do. Yes. You know, not be oblivious to Correct. not oblivious to what we see. Real quick. Not, love you, not, Dustin. Not, I know you got to go. We love you, brother. God bless you, man. We'll see you soon. Not in denial of what our flesh wants, but get in the spirit and you'll see what the spirit has in front of you. And it most likely is not what, what you see in front of you. And that's what I'm getting at. Tim's already touching on it. And, and what I'm getting at is if you were raised for the last 40 years, let's just say, seeing, and that's what lets you believe, you're seeing pretty much the flesh and that's all you're receiving is that so you think that's life so when you hear things of god it just sounds kind of awkward it sounds kind of ah, i don't get it. it it sounds like a pie in the sky thing it's because you were trained with the wisdom of the world and you think it's smart but it in the bible it actually said you're fools like that's the bible it's scripture like it's not my opinion it's god he says the wisdom of the world is as fools. So what I'm getting at is if we were trained all these years, our inclination is always going to be to walk in that. So what Tim and I are challenging ourselves and challenging you with is what do you see? Because it's so easy to see what's in front of me, my hand, Tim, this computer. It's easy to see that. But mm. can we see? Woo! Can we see the invisible God? Can mm. we see our creator? Can mm. we see how much he loves us? Can we see how much grace he has poured upon your life? Can we see how much we've been wow. redeemed? 
Can we see how much that we are actually sons, no mm. longer orphans, no longer bastard children, like Tim was saying earlier. We are not that. We have been adopted into the beloved, into the yeah. kingdom of God. Do we see that? Because honestly, until we see that, you will, we will continue to struggle in the flesh because the flesh says its desires, it'll continue to go that way. Like it's going to keep going that and, way. And I got a scripture, man. I learned a scripture Good. back when all I knew was the law. But this scripture came to my mind and it says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So it's like nobody in this mm. entire world has lived a perfect <laughs> a perfect life. No, nobody here has a clean slate. Right. You know what I mean? But God comes in and he says, but I wish that none would perish, but all would have eternal life. And, and it's like so many people that I grew up with, all they talked about was getting to heaven. You know, they didn't talk about heaven right now and, yes. and experiencing Yes. The goodness of God right now. It was like, oh man, I'm gonna tie so I'm gonna get some money back. You know, like everything was like self, you know, I'm gonna get my goal when I get to heaven. You know, someone someone had a shirt on today that said God is dope. And like I love like I love slang language, you know. But I look at that shirt and I go, dude, I that know. is not dope. Like, he is not, like, drunk. God is dope, like, but he's not dope. Yeah, it, it just was weird to me. It was kind of like, I dude, know. God is, God, that's not who God is. Like, that's our, that's our perception of him. And, and, and it's like, we see him, we're like, he's cool, Bro. but even more than cool. <laughs> Even more than cool, he's holy. And he's completely, insanely better than you think he is. And your words can't even, and your mind can't yeah. even, and your body can't even comprehend. And Bro. That's, that's what he's wanting us to see is how yes. holy he yes. is. And his way is the only way. Because our lives were not meant to live here ever. Dude, I just got this huge vision, and it's a simple one. When you were talking, and this is what it was. Oh, man. We walk around, the, the people, and this is not a degrading thing, everybody. I'm just going to disclaim this. I'm not degrading you. Tim's not degrading you. We're not saying that. But this is the perspective that we're living from. When we wear a shirt, and I understand what you're trying to say, but when you wear a shirt that says God is dope, you don't understand the Savior. You don't understand. Because I guarantee you, if God Almighty was even in the, uh... same, in the same wall as you, you wouldn't be saying God is dope. No, you you'd be flat be on your face crying and bawling. And, you know, <laughs> I, I that shows us that we don't see. And and and, yeah, Tim, I, and that's you know, just, we don't we don't we only know a glimpse of that glory. Like I, I couldn't even tell you. I just I just had moments of his glory <laughs> where I felt him. And like Tim's feeling him right now. And the yeah. Holy Spirit will come upon you and you just get like, oh my gosh. Yeah. It feels like a massage, and I'm like, oh my god! Jesus. But are you kidding me? I'm talking. That's holy. Jesus. Now, what if it's God, Jesus. Almighty God? No wonder they're in heaven right now, singing holy, Jesus. holy, holy, because He <sighs> is worthy. He is more than dope. He's not dope, man. God, God is holy. Like, oh man. No disrespect to those that have worn that shirt, but I've had the same thought. I saw that shirt last week, and I had that same exact thought. And it's only because I think, and, and Tim and I are not saying that we're any different. We're just saying that I saw it differently in the sense, and I know this is what Tim is saying, there was a lack of reverence in that shirt. There was a, there was, there was a lack of vision, you yeah. know, and, and, and that's, that's what this whole message tonight is, is if our vision is – is is from our eyes. <laughs> it is it's messed up. I was telling Tony, dude, check <laughs> this out. I said, dude, I was born without glasses. Yeah, here we go. Right? 
I got my one eye that's tripping out because I'm getting. Wait, wrecked. I can't read the comments. I gotta put this I back. Know, on. But I was born without glasses, right? Right. I said, dude, thank God for glasses because my vision is messed up. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, dude, if I try to read you something right now, like that's further away than like two, three feet, like it would be nonsense for you to listen to. And, And it's like, what we're saying is our vision is blurred without that extended heavenly vision. And and I think that's what God is renewing in us this month. He's coming at us hard and strong. Put my glasses on so I don't fall over. Oh, I'll fall (laughs) over anyway. But God God is wanting this month to come back to us and be like, hey, I'm here to renew your vision. You know, your view of me, I get it. And I, I appreciate you thinking that I'm dope, but man, I'm bringing something that you've never seen. That's what I hear him saying. I am bringing something new. The scripture says, I am bringing something new. Do you not perceive it? Why? Because we are looking with our own human effort. And and I don't want to stay on here so long that, that we just exhaust this point. But if you can start seeing heaven in other people, start seeing the potential they have to follow the one that created them, then you can start seeing people the way God sees them. Not, not, yes. Sometimes it's hard to see past all the issues in people's lives because yeah. you have the discernment of spirit or sometimes a judgmental spirit. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. I'll say this, is that God sometimes will give us a download of somebody's life so that we can come up and say, hey, man, I'm just being honest. I know what you're going through right now because God downloaded it to me or God, God shared with me what's on your heart. and that is, That's a hard time right now. Mm-hmm. But God is wanting that you would hear the good news. And the good news yeah. is that you don't need anything new to happen to you today. You don't, you don't even need to go to church right now. All you need right now is to understand that God already did enough. Yeah. He already yep. gave you forgiveness. He already exactly. gave you hope for everything that looks hopeless right now. And God wants to remind you that his son that was resurrected from the dead wants to resurrect you right now. And then we can go to those people in Home Depot or Lowe's or Walmart or wherever you shop, you know, you can go to those people and you can give them that. You can give them that Holy yeah. Spirit that you have inside of you. And you don't have to have a written message because it's already been written out. You don't have to perform. You don't have to smile. You know, if you don't smile, it's okay. Mm-hmm. But, but I'll tell you this. Once you start recognizing Holy Ghost is there, you're going to smile. You know, you're going to get filled with joy that's unspeakable and full of glory. And you're going to be able to fill that person up, overflowing. Man. You know, what I see right now, <laughs> what I see is this. The reason. Hmm. Wow, Lord. <sighs> Thomas yeah. said to the disciples, I will not believe unless he's standing right here in front of me. And I could put my finger through his holes. And and G and he does it. Jesus is there. You guys know the story. And but Jesus follows it and says, "You believe because you see, like physically see me. But greater are those who believe without seeing." And this is what Tim and I are talking about. What do you see? Do you see? Do you see Jesus alive, or is he still dead? Wow! Wow! Do you see Jesus alive? Because scripture says he is at the right hand of the father. The blood is on the mercy seat, crying better things for you and me. <laughs> He's crying better things, just like your, your children, your children's crying right now. Give me a second. Go ahead. Yeah, Keep go ahead. going. Keep going. You're good. The, the, um, on the mercy seat, crying better things, right? So, 
the blood on the mercy seat crying better things. And I just think if, if, if we would take a moment to understand that, that, wow, Jesus is alive, that G, that Jesus is, is, is interceding on our behalf. Like Jesus is literally interceding on our behalf. So what I see is this is if, if we don't, if oh. we don't see, <laughs> if we don't see his love, how can we be love? If we don't wow. receive his grace, how could we be grace? Mm. If we don't receive his mercy, how could we be merciful? If we don't receive forgiveness, how could we forgive others? Wow. And that's what I see right now so clear is the reason the world is in the state that it's in. It does not see the living Jesus. Hmm. It does not see Jesus. We don't see wow. Jesus because we can say we understand, yes, his love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Okay, but have you received it? And if you have received it, are you now giving it? Are you giving that same grace? Are you giving that same mercy? Are you giving that same forgiveness? Are you giving that same love? And Tim touched on this earlier. We're talking about uh, marriage and our spouse. And, and sometimes, yeah, Tim, you know, you have some good things. Tony, you have some good things, but you guys don't always apply those things. Well, we're not perfect, but we know the one who is. And our yeah. heart gets checked and we immediately go. It may not be like that second, but we will go back to the Father God and say, man, I messed up there. I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't stay in the spirit with my response. And, and the scripture that I'm being reminded of, and I'll, I'll pass it over to you here in a minute, is John 7, uh, 3. Uh, why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? So... The reason I say that is we're quick to point the finger at one another, but we're not quick to just love one another. We're not quick to grace one another. We're not quick to merciful with one another. We're not quick to forgive one another. And I believe what I'm seeing right now from the Lord is, will we see him? Will we see the way that he's extended love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness to us? Will we receive that? And now will we display that? amongst each other because i think mm. when we do that mm. that's when we will truly see each other the way god sees us because right now it's truly hard if we don't do that it's impossible because you know what i'm always gonna fail somebody i'm always gonna not meet somebody's mm. expectation because there shouldn't have been an expectation there in the first place but if we would just love each other dude how could i fail you if i just love you how could you fail me if you just love me? And, and, and I just feel this really deep in my heart right now. Like, Father God, help us, Lord. Help us to see your love, your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness, that we would see how you bestowed that upon us, that we would receive it, Lord, and that not only would we receive it and walk in it, but we would actually display it and give it freely. Freely it was given to us. Freely we should give it to others. Instead of pointing the finger or looking at the log or the speck in somebody else's eye, Lord, that we would just extend grace. Even when we get attacked with, you know, you shouldn't do this, 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 that, the other, that we would respond with grace, that we would respond with mercy, that we would respond with love, that we would respond with forgiveness, Father God, because truly, Lord, you did it. You are the ultimate example of doing that, of walking by the Spirit. So, mm -hmm. Jesus, we ask you, you have sent us the Comforter, the Advocate, and Holy Spirit, we just ask that you would just help every single person that's listening to these words right now, that you would help us to extend love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness, Father God, that we would walk by following you, that we would stop doing it our way, and we would start going Yahweh. And that it would just be your way, Father God. And that it's not, it's not about proving that we were right and someone was wrong, but it's just extending love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness. Help us, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm. I, heard, I heard the word or the phrase, bowl of soup. And I was reading in scripture this week, and it says something like, don't be like Esau. 
you know, they gave up his birthright for a bowl of soup, you know, and what mm-hmm. he saw right in front of him and it was hot and it was warm and, you know, his stomach was empty. You know, don't be like he saw that, that sold his birthright. Gosh. Because he didn't see what that meant. No, nah, he, he, you know, he, he's, he's all of us. Like we, 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 mm. I'm, I can't even be straight with you. You know, hey, I, like I, I, sometimes I can't be straight with everybody, you know, but I can, I can be straight with God, you know, yeah. and, and, and it's like some of us, we've given up our birthright and the Lord is saying, it's time to stop doing that. It, it, it's time. It's time to know who you are. <laughs> like, if, yeah, if you don't know I who hear. you are, then you're going to consistently give up your right as a co-heir with Christ. And, and, and this, is, this is the most important thing that I believe that, that God has given me a word uh, about, you know, was sharing with you guys was, man, like, you got to know who you are and and the only That's one that hearing. can remind you who you really are is is the one that made you and in and, and a lot of us like man tim you say god all the time you talk about god constantly man like you know dude he's my everything you know mm-hmm. he's the one that talks to me when i wake up and you know i got a thought that's like way out of the way you know he he pulls me back you know, I get out of bed and my back and my neck hurt. And I say, God, bring your healing. And then he brings his healing. You know, I, I go to eat and I realize, whoa, how do we get all this food? Hmm. Dude, he gave me the energy to go to work. Like, And, and what I'm saying in saying all this is you got to recognize what the unseen has done in your life. And so the good things that you see in front of you all go back to him. You know, and in and, and scripture it says, yeah. humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will lift you up. And 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 the thing is, man, if I humble myself, God, things are not going well right in front of me. They're not going well beside me. I get I every time I go out, I see somebody that got a mask on and I can't understand what they're saying, and I feel like I'm in a freaking movie with a bunch of weird people but god i'm telling you i I love my wife that you are number one and you are ruling and reigning over this situation and when we do that you know we can walk in him we can we can recognize that dude you're gonna give me something that is beyond what is right there what is what is crazy to me right in front of me is still crazy to you up there because, because he sees everything too, you know? And, and so that's just, that's just the, the thing that I'm getting is we can't give up our birthright. We can't give up that good report for something just, just to have a conversation with somebody, you know, or just, just to relate to somebody. We can't, we, we have to stop giving up that birthright. And, and start seeing straight and seeing clear again. You know, <laughs> what she said birthright, that's what I heard so loud and clear was that he said, you don't know what you're giving up. Wow. You don't even know what you're giving up because wow. you don't even know me. So how could wow. you know what you're giving up if you don't even wow. know me? It, man, wow. it... it, it that's just wow. amazing to me. What that that just speaks so loud. Yes. You don't wow. even know what you're giving up. And then he immediately gave me an example. Women, you don't know what you're giving up when you open your legs and you give you, yourself away. You don't know what you're giving up. It's it's very similar to what God has for us, our identity in him. You don't know because you don't understand your true worth. You don't understand your true value. Men, when you just want to plant your seed here and there, you don't know what you're giving up. Every time you go and do that, you don't know what you're giving up. And, and he, said, he says, you don't know because you don't even know me in you. You don't know. You don't know what you're giving up. You are so, 
You have such value. You have such worth. But the world has degraded that value. The world has degraded that worth. The world has literally said sex is nothing. Sex is nothing. It don't mean nothing. It's just, yeah, you got to get it on. You got to get it on. You got to do this. You got to do that. Do what you need to do. I'm speaking from experience when in the past, in my old man, my old way of living, when I took virginities away and I'm like, man, I look back at it like, man, Lord, that was like that was somebody's daughter. That was some, you know what I'm saying? And I, and I look back and now I have this understanding because I know who I am now. I know my birthright now. And, and, and I'm not condemned by what I did in the past because that was the old me. I was lost and now I'm found. But I can I can look at that and say, wow, Lord, you truly have transformed me because before I never thought like that. And, and, and I'm here to tell you right now, we don't even know what we have in our birthright in him. And I'm just using that. That was the analogy he gave me is just the virginity of a woman, the virginity of a man. It, like, God, but even that but even that purity that he the purity. gives to us. You know, as as his kids, when we say, Jesus, come and renew me, God, make me white as snow, you know, he 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 just brought you back to purity. Like you are a new person now. Your life has went from here and now you're you're seated in heavenly places. And he's like, every time you don't understand who I have made you to be, you take your place of seated, yes. sitting next, you know, next to God when He calls yes. His children, He's saying, "Man, I put my arms around you." You know, like yes. someone, I'm never going to holy holies. Like I'd be ripped out of there so fast. But dude, He's yeah. calling us to a place where we we fall in love with Him, and He's holding us, and we're sitting on His lap, and He's bringing us into purity. Yes. And then what we do when we forget our birthright, when we yes. when if we look away from Him. Even we can be sitting on his lap and look away from him and say, oh, man, I don't deserve to be up here. And we just start dropping low, low, low. And then here it is. Ten years later, dude, you're like, why have I gotten this far away from God? Because you've been looking away from him. You've been seeing what is in front of you when when if you would have just took a right, if you would have just look, took your eyes to the right, you would have saw he was there. Yes. You know, and, and it's like, and, and I don't know why I got to speak about this, but if you were si- sitting on God's lap right now, you would see the elders, right? But God's asked us to look into his eyes, you know, and the thing is that a lot of us, we were in church and we see teachers and we see elders and we see those that we respect and all these different things here on earth take, take away heaven. We see people on earth that, that we look up to and we're like, man, I want to do it right for them. And we don't. And you know why? Because you took your eyes off Jesus and he is asking us, what are you seeing right now? Are you seeing the elders or the teachers and trying to live up to what, what you think they want out of you? Are you looking at your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, or your boss? Or, or what? Are, are you looking at your government and hoping that everybody sees you right? Like, it's time to let go of any, you know, identity issues that yes. we've adapted yes. because of somebody else's opinion and start saying, dude, the only one that matters right now is Yahweh. Like the only one that matters yes. right now is looking at Jesus and, and hearing what he has to say. And this is what he's pulling us into is getting back to that father, son, father, daughter, talk, conversation, where we ain't letting anybody else interpret what the father's saying to us. Bro, and that's the thing, bro, honestly, look, I love how you phrased it because here's what <laughs> Because what it is, is this, even when I shared that testimony yeah. about, about doing what I did, there was zero condemnation as I was telling that. You know why? Because I recognize my identity now. When I share that testimony, it's more about the awe of the transformation. Wow. It's about the awe of him. Like, wow, I used to be that and now I'm this. I used to, you see what I'm saying? So some people, they can't even talk about some of those things in the past because they feel like, oh, I'm reliving it. Dude, 
I could talk about it because I'm not reliving it. I know that was the old me. I'm a new creation and I'm running with this. And and to me, it's exciting because mm. like I could, I could, I could sit there and 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 be oh woe is me. That's how I used to think. But the new me now says, Man, thank you, Lord. Look at the transformation you've done. Look at the purity you have set back wow. into my heart. And and I could glorify the Father with that. And he gets so much more glory for that because. He understands that I see myself as a son now, not a bastard's child, you know, that I see myself as a son and heir to the kingdom. And I'm going to say, man, I want to do his will on earth. And it's only because of what I see. And what I see is him in me and me in him. And that's what Tim and I are talking about. We have to get back to seeing him back to seeing that he is in us and we are in him and get in the word of God and see what he says about us mm. and start taking him at his mm. word. His word became the word became flesh. And that name is Jesus. The word became flesh and his name is Jesus. And he said, whom the son sets free is free indeed. So if you call yourself a child of God and you have laid your life for him, mm. then your life is no longer yours. You have laid it down at his feet and you said, Lord, I'm done doing it my way. Let's do it the father's way, Yahweh. Let's do it because mm. you the word, I, work, I want to take God at his word. Jesus, you are the living word. You are the word that became flesh. You walked this same earth that we're walking on and you did it. You were tempted in all these forms and fashions, yet you still walk by the spirit. And now the Holy Spirit resides wow. in us. And he's saying, will you follow me? Here's the thing. He says, deny, carry, follow how could we follow jesus if we're still doing it our way hmm. remember jesus only said and did what the father said and did jesus's way is yahweh <laughs> jesus's way is yahweh yeah god it's the father He's going the Father's way, and Jesus made the path. He's just going, mm. right? And we are to follow him and his example. And, mm. and, I, and I feel like, you know how, like, even just, let's just take the simplest conversation. People could talk about sports. Let's just use Michael Jordan and LeBron James, and they'll be like, oh, yeah, who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? And everybody points in there. Mm. And the thing that everybody gets lost, though it gets lost in the translation is, they're both great for what they did in their time. You can't enjoy that greatness there and you can't enjoy that greatness because you live through Michael Jordan. So you don't want to enjoy the greatness of LeBron James because you could say, man, I went to Michael Jordan's game. I did this. I did that. It's all related to you. It literally has nothing to do with LeBron James or Michael Jordan, but it has to go back to you because you formed an opinion and you made a thing, you made a stamp and you're like, no, this is what it is. Mm. And here's what I'm, what I'm hearing really loud and clear. How many of us have lived a certain way in our life? It could be a good life. It, it, I'm not saying it's not. You could be loving God and all of that. But how many of us are doing it still with our stamp of approval our way? Have we taken the time to blank canvas our mind and say, you know what, Jesus, I think I lived a pretty good life. But you know what? I just want to do it your way. Even what I do know. Can you teach me? Can you reteach me? Can you refather me? Wow. Whoa. Wow. That's Jesus. a lot. Jesus. Will you I, 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 me? I, I feel. Whoa. I had to I stop. Feel, I feel a prayer <laughs> for that. Mm hmm. And God, I just want to ask Thank and you, repent Lord. for our country of, of thinking that we know it all. God, I repent on behalf of myself and my country of thinking that we have the best. God, we are so far away from you right now as a country, as a nation. And God, I ask that you would come and you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon all flesh, that we would prophesy and speak words of life over one another. God, that we would not condemn those who are walking in the flesh, but God, we would lift them up. 
that God, when one piece is down, we would pull him up. God, in Jesus' yes. name, I pray that our president would see your face. Jesus. God, I ask that he would see your face. Yes, God, I Lord. ask that you would see your face and not turn from your way. God, I know that your word says that if we give respect and honor, God, to those in authority, that they will come to you. And I ask right now, God, that our respect for those in authority would not be on what they do for us, but how they are looking and if they are looking at you. God, I pray that our honor would be to you, that our loyalty would be to you. And in that, God, that we would see a new creation, a new, a new nation right under now God. in Jesus' name, a new nation under your leadership. God, we're not looking for a soul. We're looking for you, Jesus. And we say, God, bring us back to that place where we can have less criticism towards one another, to where we can say yes and amen to your words, to your way, God. We say that in your name, we will see freedom. We will see unity in Jesus' name. Mm. We will see unity. We will see loyalty to you in Jesus' name. We repent for walking in our way, God. It's not that we are an evil country, but we have been a fleshly, unclean bride. And God, we say it's time now that we come back to you as the bridegroom without any expectation other than love. Your banner over your children, over your bride is love. And we say yes, yes. And amen to you, God. We ask that we would turn from our wicked ways and we would worship you, Yahweh. God, you are our provider. And we thank you for the provision of our vision being renewed. <laughs> we say yes to the dress. We say yes to the dress. We say yes to the dress. Yes. You, Father God. Man, you know, yeah. the, amen. Awesome prayer. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. So good. You know, <laughs> something I want to touch on that just in that prayer I saw, some of us, some, whoever's going to hear this message down the Jesus. line. Jesus. His word never returns void. I'm speaking to you right now. You wow. don't need to wait wow. for a revival. Somebody's waiting for a wow. thousand people for this revival. Revival happens with us individually. It's a revived spirit. It's a revived heart. And all it needs is one. If one would get revived, then you're just going to speak in love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness, and the next one will get revived and revived and revived. That's how revival is. It's a revival of your own heart. We're looking outward for this certain special revival thing, you know, just because it happened on Azuzu Street or this or that or the send and this. Dude, those are all great. That's awesome. But you know what's even more awesome? Is you revived right now where you're yeah, at? Yeah, 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 yeah. A revival yeah, yeah, yeah. in your own heart to seek His face. Yeah. A revival in your own wow. heart. Forget about what everybody yeah. is doing. A revival in your own heart that the living God lives in you. The same Holy Spirit that was wow. with Jesus is inside of you. That should revive us all. Are you wow. kidding me? Do you see what I see? Dude, I see a living God. I see wow. the living son. I see the firstborn wow. of many brethren. And that firstborn of many brethren, he has been revived. He was dead. He rose up three days later. And in him, we have it all. Tim just got disconnected somehow. I'm sure it'll come back when he clicks it. But we... That's the revival. The revival is in us. We don't have to look out. 
we look in to Jesus and we say, Lord, I know you're living in me. Lord, I know you're here with me. Lord, I love you. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you that you've revived me. And even if you're in a dark place right now, even if, if, you, if, if you feel a little lost or you feel a little confused or you feel a little depressed or you feel any of those things that actually are not of God, that's the first clue and that's okay. It's okay. It's okay to feel that way. But when you feel that way, you have to release it to the Lord because it's not of God. So we have to release it. So if you're in a dark place or if your mind is confused or you're a little depressed or you got some fear, you got some anxiety, you don't know what's going on. That's OK to feel that way. But man, do not keep it locked in your own mind and in your own heart and just leave it there because it'll grow and it'll fester and it'll grow and it'll grow. That literally is a seed. It's a seed and it's being planted from your mind. The seed hits and then it gets planted in your heart. And the more you dwell on it, the more you think on it, the more you speak on it, the more you believe on it. The more you do of that, it starts growing. It starts growing in your heart and it starts getting rooted into your heart. But none of those things are from God. So why would we want them there? The only way they get uprooted, the only way they are released is by giving them back to God and saying, Lord, this does not belong here. I do not want it. I do not have ADHD. I do not have these things that people have labeled me. Lord, I, I have you. And if I have you, then help me to refocus. Help me to have more self-control. Help me to live by the fruits of the spirit. Remove anxiety. Remove fear. Remove doubt. Remove depression. Remove confusion. Remove any of these things that are not of you. We talked about birthright, and our birthright is in him. We are heirs to the kingdom. Jesus, the firstborn of many brethren, we are that many brethren. Today is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. You can be glad in it even when you're down and out, depressed, and all of these things that I already mentioned. You could be glad in it. You know why? Because there's hope in Jesus. And you just got to let it go. You just got to let it go. And you might not even know how to let it go. And that's okay too. But at least voice it out and say, I don't want this anxiety anymore. Jesus. I don't want this fear anymore. Jesus. I don't want to doubt anymore. Jesus. Help me with my unbelief. Jesus. And if we would start voicing those things, we would speak those things. Um, Tim's phone died. That's what happened. Let me just write them back. No worries. Love you all. All right. Um, we were getting ready to wrap up anyways. Tim phone died. He didn't get to charge it up. So that's okay. We'll wrap up here in just a few minutes. And um, But that's where it's at. It, 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 my heart cries out for those that are in those tough spaces. I know I've been there. I've... I've I've, I've been in those dark spots. I've been in that confusion state. I've been there. I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was dead in sin, but now I'm alive in Christ. He is alive in you. You have to believe it. Even when you don't see it with your physical eyes, you have to believe it. That's why Jesus said to Thomas, he said, you believe because I'm standing here in front of you and you're putting your, your finger through my holes. But greater are those, greater are you and I who believe without seeing Jesus, physical Jesus in front of us. Greater are those who believe without seeing, seeing physically, right? Greater are those who believe without seeing because it's like we just got to do it by faith and we just got to believe. And I'm telling you guys, he will fill your hearts with a peace that will not make any sense. He will fill you with love. You will see how much grace and mercy and forgiveness he has for you. And when you see that, you're going you're gonna to get soaked and saturated in that. And then you want to give that. Because like I, I always say this, some people will say, yeah, but Tony, how do you, you know, do this and that? You know, I, I, I've seen you, you know, on some other videos, you know, talking to strangers and whatnot. And, and you just extend this love and grace and mercy and forgiveness. And I'm like, I know me. I know the old me 
and what I've been redeemed from and what I've been transformed into this new creation. And I know that God, that I was able to love because he first loved me. And once I grabbed the hold of that and I saw my identity in him and who I was in him, and then I saw that it was his love, his grace, his mercy and forgiveness that he bestowed on, bestowed on me. I'm like, who am I? If he gave all of that to me, who am I to withhold that from any of you? And that's the key. Besides obedience and surrender, it's, it's displaying all of that that he's given, freely given, freely I receive, freely I give back. And, and, and I can't stress it enough. Let us become love. Three things last forever, right? 1 Corinthians 13, 13. Three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Here's what I've learned. Our faith is in him. Our hope is in him. And our love is in him. That's why those three things last forever. Because Jesus is going to last forever. <laughs> he always has. He always is. And he always will be. Faith in him. Hope in him. Love in him. It's all through him. I am the vine, you are the branches. Abide in me as I abide in you. This is all scripture, but we have to abide in him. We have to see us in him and him in us. We have to see who we are in him. And that is our prayer. That is Tim and I's prayer as he prayed for the nation. He prayed for you guys. That is our prayer for all of us. What do you see? And we pray that you would no longer see what you physically see, but you will focus on seeing the unseen, that you would focus on seeing, you know, what God sees. And you were like, yeah, but Tony, how am I supposed to know what God sees? The earth is his footstool. He sees it all. The earth is his footstool. He sees it all, but he sees it all through the perspective of love. Tony, how do you know that? Because God is love. That's what scripture says. So his perspective is love because God is love. The other way we know that he says that I will remove the stony heart and I will give you the heart of flesh. The heart of flesh is the heart of Jesus. When we come to the Lord, we come to who we are. We come to this new creation. He removes that stony heart, that bitter heart, that resentful heart, that heart that didn't know better the old man living for the flesh and its desires, and he replaces it with the heart of flesh, his heart. And that's why our desires become his desires. His desires become our desires. And that's why the scripture also, when he, when he says, ask in my name and I will give you your heart's desire. But it's when our heart's desire matches his desire because we have the heart of flesh. <laughs> Amen. Let's see what Coco wrote here. Uh, remain humble because stumbling and falling hurts. Either way, we always end up on our faces. It's a choice to be obedient. Shows our love for Christ Jesus. I trust you, Jesus. Amen. Yep. Yep. No matter if we stumble. Remember that old DC talk song? What if I stumble? What if I fall? What if I lose myself and I make fools of us all? So I can't sing, but that's my version. Um, even when you stumble, even when you fall, he's there to pick you up. But that's why it's everything is in him. Everything is in him. I can't stress that enough. Everything is in him. Abiding in him, just living in him, faith in him, hope in him, love in him. It's all done in and through him. When we see that, we can live from that place and we could just... We could live with a smile on our face and we could we could just say, man, Lord, I messed up right there. I didn't love my wife quite the way I should have there. I, I responded out of the flesh instead of the spirit. And I've I've been I've been a victim of that or not a victim, but I've done that. So I have to repent to God and say, oh, man, Lord, I messed up there. I should have responded this way. Ah, uh, I wasn't I was quick to speak and slow to listen. Your word says to be quick to listen and slow to speak. 
And I say, thank you, Lord. Keep teaching me. Keep fathering me. Keep fathering me. Keep fathering me. But we got to keep our hearts soft. Because when your heart gets hard, you won't see those things right away. You'll go a week, two weeks, a month before you see any of those things. It could be months later before you see any of those things. Why? Your heart has gotten hardened. And, 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 and we don't want to be in those places. So let's keep our hearts soft. Let's keep it pliable. Let's be reminded that we are merely clay. We are merely clay in the creator's hands. Amen. That we're just clay in his hands. We don't have it all figured out. We don't get to make ourselves the way we think we should be. No, no, no. We surrender ourselves and let the creator, God, the potter, potter us, mold us and shape us and make us the way he's always seen us. An heir to the kingdom, a daughter of the king, a son of God, an heir to the kingdom, somebody living by faith and not by sight. This was something Tim and I talked about. We didn't get to touch on it here. I'll leave you guys with this. Isn't it something that it says we walk by faith and not by sight? And everybody knows that scripture. But a lot of us, we have to be honest, a lot of us are living by sight. A lot of us are, are walking by sight, by what we see in front of us physically. But see, when we walk in faith, that is in the unseen. It's not what we see with the naked eye, but it's what we see in the spirit. It's what we see our spirit sees. It's what our spirit feels. It's that discernment when you know I'm not going to go there. And the discernment that the spirit is telling you, no, don't go there. And, and that's what it is. And we want to get back to that, to living, living and walking by the spirit, not by the flesh and its desires. Amen. For we walk by faith, not by sight. So, again, um, we've all been challenged and it's time to apply. So now it's time to we, we've heard the word. We've listened to it. Let's obey the word. And now let's take action to what we've heard. And that is hearing in Hebrew. My dad knows it. He already put amen, Shema. <laughs> so the Hebrew word for hearing is Shema, to listen, obey, and take action to what you heard, ap applying it, application of what you heard, God's word. So let's take God at his word. Let's get to a place where we start becoming living epistles. He says that you are to become living epistles to be read by all men. You will take this word that God's given, God's taught us today, and, and Holy Spirit has taught us, and now it seeps into our heart. We, we, it goes into our mind, it seeps into heart, and it grows, and then we become that living epistle. So when somebody uh, comes to you about something, you're going to be able to speak from that place of Holy Spirit, from that place of your spirit, and just speaking what God wants to say to that person, because you are a child of God. And you are a living epistle to be read by all men, that you would have a, a testimony, that you be ready to speak and share your testimony on how good <clears throat> on how good God is. Amen. Like we should all be when anybody asks us, oh, man, yeah, let me tell you something. Let me tell let me tell you something. And we just share the good news of the gospel. We share the good news of God. We share what he's done, what he's pulled me out of. Like I said, I once too was lost, but now I'm found. I once too was blind, but now I see. And and he's good. He's a good, good father. So, guys, we did it. You did it. And this was awesome. Um, we're going to wrap up. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. If there is any prayer requests, just put them in the comments, and we'll definitely go back on there and uh, definitely be lifting you guys in prayer. Continue to keep us in prayer. Please keep my wife and I in prayer and uh, Tim and Claudia, um, uh, that they're, they're, <laughs> the spouses in prayer, them, just to keep our families in prayer. Uh, we, we appreciate it. Uh, not that you have to obviously pray, but it says that we should pray for one another. So, it's just a good reminder as we pray for you. I know you guys are praying for us and we and we just thank you. Um I I I, I can't do we can't do it's 
it's not that we can't do this without you because we can, because we have Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit, but it's so much better to do it with brothers and sisters. It's so much better to be able to co-labor with like-minded individuals that are going after the kingdom and going after God. Amen. So let's continue in it. Continue, continue in the faith, continue in the faith. And remember, it's a good fight of faith. It's a good fight though. It's a good fight. Even on your downest days, it's a good fight of faith. Remember that. You're good. You have been equipped to go out. You guys are saints, no longer sinners. But if you sin, we have our Lord that's there to pick us up. If we stumble, we have our Lord to there to pick us up. And as we continue to learn and be led by him, those moments will happen less and less and less. They'll just become fewer and further between. And uh, until we reach the other side of eternity. Amen. But man, God is good. I'm excited for what's to come uh, just in this world. And, uh, you know, we're going to shine. We're going to shine. So everybody get ready. Keep getting the oil in your lamps. Have that oil in your lamps ready. Yes, there's power in prayer. Amen. Keep that oil ready in your lamps. Keep that oil ready in your lamps because the 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 he's coming like a thief in the night. And if you don't have your light lit, it'll be dark like that. You want to stay lit. You want to stay lit. So get your oil in your lamps ready. Or in our modern day times, you know, you got to stay charged up. You got to stay charged up, wirelessly charged, connected to the Father. And you got to stay charged up in Him. That's the only way you're going to get through this world is by having your faith in Him, your hope in Him, your love in Him. And when you do those things, you're staying charged up, you're staying equipped, and, 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 and you're ministering to the Spirit, and He's going to lift you up. You know, in your weakness, He's made strong because He's going to lift you up and He's going to get you out of it. Um, but you got to come to him. You got to surrender and, and, and you got to, you got to speak out those things that are not of God. They're from the, the deceiver. They're from the father of lies. All he does is lie. That's his native tongue. No truth comes out. He speaks lies. That's it. And deception. That's all he does. Confusion, all of that. So we don't want any of that. When that comes in, capture the thought, submit under God, and the and Satan will have to flee. So that thought will have to flee, and it might come keep coming back, but that's okay. Keep giving it up. Keep giving it up. What doesn't belong to you, if God didn't make it for you, it's not for you. Remember who you are. Remember your birthright. Remember your identity is in Christ. Love you guys. Amen. That's it. That's all, folks. Badeep, 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 badeep. That's all, folks. So love you guys. Thank you for your prayers. And we'll be praying for you guys. Let's uh, do it again next week. And God bless you. We love you all.